If you suffer from chronic tension in your hamstrings, calves, or down in the bottom of your feet, this is the video for you. Because we're about to go over why stretching doesn't work for so many people and a solution that is not only far more effective, but produces results much, much faster. Let's get into this. Any conversation about tight muscles in the body has to be grounded in the understanding that when there is increased tension in any muscle group in the body, the body is putting that tension there on purpose. There's a reason for it. And so when looking at the muscles on the backs of our legs, muscles that are part of the broader posterior chain, which is all the muscles on the back half of the body, we need to understand that these muscles are responsible in general for pulling us upright. They extend the hips, they extend the toes, and they pull the spine into an upright position and resist the pull of gravity all day long. And so the first thing that comes to my mind when a person contacts me and says, I have tight hamstrings or cramping in my calves that never goes away and I've been stretching them for weeks or months, the first thing that I think of is this person has a postural dysfunction and or a spinal instability. Let me show you what I mean. Postural dysfunction is absolutely rampant nowadays. Multiple studies from around the world have shown that about 70% of the modern day population has a forward head position. Now, what's the significance of that? We're talking about tightness in the backs of the legs and the calves and the feet. Well, it's this, that as that head shifts further and further out in front of the gravity line, it becomes heavier and heavier. Specifically, it gains 10 pounds of functional weight for every inch that it shifts forward. Now, if you stand up really quickly and conduct this simple experiment, you'll see very quickly how it relates to tension in the feet and the backs of your legs. So what I want you to do is stand up as straight as you can and then just lean forward as far as you can, keeping your body as straight as possible. And what you'll notice when you get out into this position is the tension in your feet, calves, and hamstrings ramps up like crazy. And the reason that's happening is because that posterior chain that we talked about a second ago is fighting the forward pull of you in this suboptimal position. Well, guess what? The exact same thing is going on all hours of the day that you're upright when you have a forward head position. So the only way to effectively get rid of that tension is to come back into an optimal position. The other thing that I see in clinical practice all the time that really tends to tense up those hamstrings and calves is an unstable lower back and pelvis. Now there's a quick and easy way to determine if the tension in the back of your legs is the result of a simple muscular problem that just requires a little bit more stretching each day or if it's something more than that. So we're going to perform two assessments to figure this out. It's very helpful if you can have a video recording of yourself performing these two tests. So either set your phone up on a chair or a coffee table, or better yet, have a friend or family member record you as you perform these two quick tests. The first test is a simple standing toe touch. You're going to stand with your feet hip width apart and then just reach down and attempt to touch your toes. What you're paying attention to here is how far you can forward bend. So the angle at your hips, hips to the lower back is what we're looking at here. And then just return to your starting position. Now it's important that you don't push through pain when performing this test. It's okay to feel a little bit of stretch in your hamstrings or your calves, but if you feel any pain whatsoever in your pelvis or your lower back, you should stop immediately. So say you get to here about 45 degrees and you get pain in the lower back, that test is done for you. You should mark your findings as a 45 degree angle and then return to your starting position. By the way, if you do have pain when performing that test, it could be one data point that is indicative of an instability problem here. Then we move on to test number two which is a supine hip flexion test. So for this, you're gonna get down on the floor and you just need a comfortable surface to lie on. To perform the supine hip flexion test, just go flat on your back on a comfortable surface. Make sure that the back of your head is in contact with the floor. You don't wanna be pitched up with your chin shooting up into the air. So drop that chin, get nice and flat to the floor. And then all I want you to do is bring one leg up as high as you can while keeping the opposite leg in contact with the ground. Measure the angle from the hip to the lower back, set that one down, and then 
raise the opposite side. Once you've got that recording, you're all set. What can we learn from performing these assessments? Well, to get the answer to that, you need to understand the nature of the tests themselves. So what's different about the two? Well, in the first test, the standing toe touch, your body is fully exposed to gravity. And as you move through that range of motion, you're having to ramp up muscular activity to resist that downward pull. So for the person who has a forward head position and or instability of the lower back and pelvis, going through this range of motion is going to make them extremely uncomfortable. Why? Because they're at a massive disadvantage starting out. Like we talked about earlier, that forward head position makes the head heavier. So as you dip and go even further into that forward range of motion, the head is going to become even heavier than they're accustomed to dealing with, which is going to shorten up that range of motion by increasing the tension in their hamstrings to try and support all of that extra weight. And for the person with instability in this region, the hamstring tension is going to ramp up like crazy because like you saw with that forward lean test, as you bend forward, your muscles have to do more work. Well, what happens when these muscles are shut down? Other muscles, like the muscles in your hamstrings and your calves, kick on to try and take up the slack that's left over from these muscles not working. So what you'll find for the person who has that forward head position or instability in this region is that their range of motion in that standing toe touch will be limited when you compare it to the lying test. So let me give you an example. Person with forward head position. Give them the standing toe touch test. Normal range of motion is 90 degrees all the way down, but they might only be able to go halfway there. Maybe they can only go 45 degrees and they'll often have pain or discomfort in the lower back when they attempt this test. But you take that exact same person, no less than a second later, lie them flat on their back and have them perform that supine hip flexion test and that leg will come up to 75 degrees or maybe all the way to 90 degrees, all the way up to normal. And you're saying to yourself, whoa, what happened? My hamstrings instantly became more flexible. Well, your body turned down the tension in those hamstrings because when you went into that flat lying position, you were no longer having to resist the pull of gravity. In fact, gravity is now pulling you down into the ground and helping to stabilize you and allowing you to move from that stable base, which is why your hamstring flexibility increases so fast. So for the person who has those kind of results, a short standing test, but a much greater lying test, they should never be stretching their hamstrings until they correct the instability problem and or the forward head position. I'm gonna say that again. If your standing test is short and your lying test is significantly greater, do not stretch your hamstrings. Instead, you should be focusing on glute strengthening, strengthening the muscles around your midsection to help stabilize this region. And if you've got a forward head position, you should be working every single day to normalize that because that's the only way you will ever permanently get rid of the tension in your hamstrings, calves, and down in the bottoms of your feet. And for the people out there whose flexibility was limited and measured roughly the same in both positions, well, it's possible that you just need a more effective way of stretching your hamstrings. Now, the hamstrings can be a challenging muscle group to stretch because they cross two joints. They cross both the knee joint and the hip joint. And so my favorite way for increasing flexibility in this muscle group is to stretch it from two different positions. This way I make sure that I'm increasing the length all the way from origin to insertion. The stretch with the first position is gonna target the insertion end of the hamstring down here by the back of the knee. The only thing that you're gonna need for this is either a door frame with the door swung open or a sturdy piece of furniture with a vertical edge like this filing cabinet that I'm using. And then from there, what you're gonna do is go flat on your back and you're gonna extend one leg straight up against that piece of furniture or into the frame of the door. The opposite leg will go through the door or here like I'm doing next to the furniture. And then from there, what you're gonna do is position your body either closer to the door to increase the stretch or further away from the furniture or door to decrease the stretch until you feel just a lot of tension here at the back of the knee, but a manageable amount of tension. You should not be in pain. And then you're just gonna hold that stretch, relaxing the upper body completely for 90 seconds. Once you finish 90 seconds, you will take that leg down, move over and switch over to the other leg and perform 90 seconds on that side. 
Now, what I like about this is that it's fully adjustable for different levels of flexibility. Like I said, if I wanna get a bigger stretch, I'll just scoot myself closer to the furniture or to the door frame. Eventually, when you get normal flexibility at the hamstring, you'll be able to touch your rear end to that piece of furniture or to the frame of the door. That would represent roughly 90 degrees of hip flexion. That's normal. What's important during this stretch, you're gonna hold for 90 seconds, keep the knee straight the entire time, and then just keep that opposite leg pressed down into the floor while you're doing it. The second stretch is gonna target the upper or origin portion of the hamstring way up here at the hip. The only thing that you're gonna need for this is a comfortable surface to lie on. Once you've got that, just go flat on your back. Now, the starting position is almost identical to the last stretch. One leg is gonna be extended out in front of you. You're gonna be actively pushing the back of that knee down to the floor. The opposite knee you're gonna bend and you're going to pull it towards the shoulder on the same side. You're gonna use your arms to get a good pull on that leg and you should feel the stretch way up here at the upper portion of the hamstrings or maybe even the lower portion of your rear end. So you're gonna pull there for 90 seconds continuously, trying to bring that knee closer and closer to the shoulder on the same side. If you find that your ribs are in the way, you can pull just to the outside of your body a little bit and that helps to create a little bit more space and can help you to get a deeper stretch. Now, occasionally I'll get people in my practice who can't take that kind of pressure on their knees. No problem, it's a simple modification. You just move your hand position to here behind the knee and then you pull from there and that allows you to keep the pressure off of the knee as you pull for that 90 seconds. Once you finish that time, switch over to the opposite side. Now I'm actively pushing this knee into the floor and I'm pulling this one up for 90 seconds, really trying to get that knee to the shoulder. Great stretch for targeting the upper portion of the hamstrings. This makes sure that you're stretching the entire muscle all the way from top to bottom. And for those of you that should not be stretching your hamstrings right now because that tension is coming from somewhere else, well, the good news is that I've got a bunch of videos on this channel to help you out, including multiple videos on glute strengthening, got a video on my favorite exercise for increasing stability at the midsection, as well as multiple videos on detecting and correcting forward head position. Now I'm going to include links for those videos in the description down below under the appropriate headline so that you know exactly what to look for. I want to thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll put this information to good use. Before you head out of here, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you're updated every time a new video comes out. That's all for now. See you next week.